There you see the fist pump. Both players will lag to see who gets this match underway. I'm Carl Boys. I'm joined in the box. Eddie Rivera. Thanks, Carl. Happy to be here at day three. Should be some exciting matches. Looking forward to this one. And then our two o'clock, we've got some really exciting matches too. So don't miss it. All day long, we'll have some heavy hitting action. I believe Lauro Bongay won the lag from the Philippines. Filipinos are really showing up, aren't they, this tournament? They're, they're got quite a few players still in it. I think um, it's possible we might see one of them in the finals. Yeah, there's a few gone through the winner's side of the bracket. After this round, loser's qualification, we will have 16 players with one loss. They will be drawn in to face the 16 winners that will make our final 32 that's how it works double elimination loser of this match will simply be out win or go home Usually when you see a Filipino flag next to a person with a pool cue, it means they can play the game pretty <laughs> well. So I've never seen this man play. So I'm looking forward to see what kind of level he's at. Well, he doesn't have a shot on the one. I believe the four ball's in the way. Yep, so going to either be pushing here or kicking behind the one most likely be a push just sends the cue ball a little further down table obviously the one ball is visible should be another defense here probably hiding behind the two ball send the one ball down table maybe using the eight This is Jew Berry, that's his nickname, that's what we're going to call him. Yep, he ended up using the eight ball. Nice defense by Judy Berry. We will keep you updated if you're not on digitalpool.com looking yourself. If you're just watching this match, we will keep you updated on the scores from the other matches 16 matches are being played that will give us 16 winners from this round and as I said earlier they will play the 16 undefeated players judgment day here on day three may pot this ball in the corner it could even go off the six as well Oh, pockets a six instead. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad shot, I'm afraid. You will know that at this level you should at least hit the ball. Gives a pretty open rack back to Bongay. One to the two and two to the four is fairly easy, so I don't see many trouble here. Let's see how he gets to the two. Yeah, he's put the cue ball on the left side of the table because he knows he can just spin that cue ball round, that natural path. Doesn't want the cue ball to finish on the rail. He's going above the four. Yeah, it's a pretty safe shot there because even if he did hit the four, most likely he'd still have a shot too. No real danger by going two rails that way. Philippines have produced some wonderful players over the years when you when you look back. They've all got their own little unique style, the way they stand, the way they hold the cue. Look how far he's off off the cue. He doesn't put his chin down on the cue or close to it. He's stood quite high up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Needs his cue ball to bounce a little bit, and it has. Cued that one nicely. Went in clean, that's always a good sign. Sometimes when they rattle and fall in, that means you've not delivered the cue through straight. So it's that nine ball to take yeah. the first rack over to the way of Laurel Bongay from the Philippines. Yeah, strong rack it was. Really felt confident table, no issues there. Of course, having ball in hand on the one doesn't hurt at all. David Baller from Singapore is playing Li Han Siang. Li Han Siang we've seen on this feature table. David Baller has won the first rack. Masato Yoshikawa. He's won the opening two racks. That's the table there I was just talking about. Slight miss hit there on the break. He won't be happy with that one. All right, now it's Drew Barry's turn to break. See if he can answer back here. Probably wants to make up for that mistake he had on the six. By pocketing the six before he made the one. This will work. Needs a shot on the four though. That's going to be the next ball I believe. There you see he doesn't have a shot. So a little bit like the opening rack. Both players break. Both players can't pot the ball. And just having a quick glance at the table, it doesn't look like there's a very obvious safety, so this is going to need a little bit of thought. Because I think you can just see the edge of the four, but he can play a push out as well. That's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So he's called push. You've always got to call push to the referee. You can't just get down and roll the ball. <laughs> that would be a foul. And that has happened in professional tournaments. Is that right? You've seen it happen. It's happened two or three times in the Moscow and Cup. Oh, wow. Yeah, something that may seem obvious to you may not be to your opponent or the referee for that matter. He's down quick, isn't it? Yeah. That didn't look like it was a shot where you could get down very quick. Well, he's going to give Juberi a shot here in the four. I believe he'll take it all the way down. He might just try and sneak it in the side, but if he does, he's going to have to put a little bit on this ball, which he is from top English. He missed it. Missed it in the corner. Never looked in, did it, all the way there? It didn't, yeah. Missed it by about a diamond and a half. I've been out having a little mooch around. I was here this morning very early and I was messing around on the table not with the cue I was just rolling the balls and we've seen a lot of balls slide in from from like big down the rail but when I was looking at the table they looked tight the pockets yep. so it must just be down to the fact that it's all brand new cloth and brand new balls because when I was looking I thought they look a lot tighter when when I was out there yeah yeah absolutely the pockets are pretty tight you know they're kind of known for that here at Aspire Recreational Centre to be true not to be big bucket pockets, right? Let me ask you, how, how big of a difference is, does it make to you when you get these the balls cleaned after every match? Does it have a little bit of extra movement to them, or do you, does that not really affect the, the, the shot too much? It definitely affects the shot. It means, for instance, if you're drawing the ball back just on a straight shot, it's going to draw back a lot easier, which is not necessarily a good thing, because if you're under pressure and you're nervous, you know it's going to react super responsive. Mm -hmm. And also, when you're playing the cue ball off of the rail, so 
positional shot or a kick shot you've got to allow for it a lot more it doesn't really play the natural angle and what I mean by the natural angle is like you, everyone's used to playing in a club aren't they where the cloth's quite old and the balls are dirty mm -hmm. so it doesn't react like that so it may take a couple racks to get used to it you're saying yeah I mean the, the best players in the world where they've played so many matches on TV you know they're used to it now but it's more the players where they've not had much TV arena table time that you know the table we play the Moscone Cup on is it's so different because it's just one table hmm. it's straight in and there's only four nights play on it so even when the tournament's finished it's still new really yeah and then you've got all the lights above shining down it's a scary place to be <laughs> coming up pretty soon Las Vegas yes it is indeed well, just like that 2-0 Laro Bange out to a quick start. He's looking really confident at the table and making short work of this so far. I think we're going to have to see Drew Berry come with something quick, otherwise, he's going to get stuck in a big hole. Much bigger than he wants to be, that's for sure. Like I mentioned, Bongay with a 2-0 lead, and now he's got the break. This is a precarious position that he's putting his teammate in, or his opponent in. Chuberry really needs to come get a little lucky here. Hopefully the pole gods are on his side and he can get back at the table here. Okay, no open shot on this two. We can see the two. And the safety looks looks very obvious, so I believe Bongay will play this shot. He can just clip off the edge there, you can see, can't he? He can just roll that up to the side rail near the middle and just get the cue ball back over towards the six. And then you've got the six, the nine, and the three as a blocker. It's all about pace, this shot nothing else and he's done a nice job oh he's pulled the jump cue out okay yeah, a little surprised. He's only jumping over the six ball, so not... Oh, and he didn't get over it. He got over the six, but ended up bumping right into the nine. You know, Lauro is really testing Drew Barry in this match because he's either kicking or jumping and hasn't really got into any sort of rhythm. Yeah, that's the game of nine ball as well sometimes a match just it can just start like that and this is this is what makes the best pool players the best because they don't give up they don't dwell on it and you could be three or four down and they, you know you're not always going to win the match but they try and turn it round they make a game of it try and put the opponent that has had the lead back under pressure purple four ball looks like it might go off the right jaw we'll have an idea after this shot oh he doesn't he's playing for the combo because there's no way he'd have left the cue ball there if it went <laughs> a little surprised he went for the combo well now he's looking at the pot if the four goes easy which it doesn't because he keeps looking 
the cue ball landing there may not be that bad, but the fact that this is tight, you'd want to be straight on the four. He could have just played a little stop shot then. Oh, wow. He's done well there, hasn't he? But he's hooked himself behind the nine. Sure has. A little bit unlucky, really. He was probably putting that much focus on the pot and he probably never thought he'd land there with the cue ball he even thought maybe he'd roll into the nine so a little bit unlucky but the nine ball was always there he's trying to swerve round it hit the rail and then pocket the five ball and if you've played pool to a decent level <laughs> you know this is where the Filipinos excel Got a little lucky there. Yeah, he didn't play it like that. But it wasn't far away. Them two real kick shots at times, you, you know, he was trying to put it in the corner. And you, you look at it and think, well, he was a mile off there. But you're actually not. You know, when you watch the replays back, you could just be talking a, a few mil. Trying to lock up behind the five. I don't think this is... He's probably just okay, but it should have been right on the eight ball. Yeah, exactly. Gave a little bit of space between the eight and the queue. Might be enough for Lauda to jack up and maybe spin slightly around. Nope, looks like he's going to jump this. Oh, no. Thought about bringing out the queue. Still going with the slight mass A. Has a chance of pocketing the five. Oh, no one for the kick. Coming around and... I think Drew Barry should be happy that he's got a shot at the five and then it's back at the table. With a pretty clean run out. Sometimes you've just got to give the balls a good old whack. a little longer than you probably should do. Yeah, he did. Just needs to play a little draw shot. Could maybe go forward, but I think he'd have to play with spin, so you can see he's aiming low. And he's lost the cue ball. That was all caused by the previous shot. Just get the cue ball in the centre of the table and you've won the rack. Now, you've got to play some form of bank shot or safety, Eddie. He looked like he just kind of babied that ball. He really didn't put enough into it, didn't get that, that draw that he needs to. And, uh, yeah, left himself a real tough shot here. Um, but he drills it. Well, he'll be delighted with that because if you miss that bank and go three down, well, you're fuming yourself, but he made the bank. And he's got his first rack of this match. Loser's qualification round. Judgment day here on day three. One ball is on the spot on the break. Playing with a template. Also playing the three-point rule. These are the other tables in action. Now you can see another Filipino player there just in the distance that is Demosthes Pulpul Masato Yoshikoa is playing Hayato and Shikata Masato is 5-0 up we've been playing 20 minutes <laughs> so that is speedy stuff also 5-0 up Chang Yu Long he lost to Jeffrey DeLuna in the winner's side. That's why he's in the one loss side, but he's 5 0 up, so he's looking good to qualify. They are flying through those racks. Coping Chung, he's 5 0 up as well, so there's something about this morning where everyone's racing onto five. Aliushish Yap 
the homeboy, East 3 1 up against Dote Kien. We saw Dote Kien yesterday play against Ibrahim. It was a hill hill battle, but if Dote Kien plays like he did last night, this will be a quick match for Aloysius. Is he having a go at the pot? He certainly looks like he's gonna. He's overdone it. Where's the cue ball gonna finish? He's got away with one there, I believe. Yeah, he sure did. Is he kicking off the top rail? I think so. He's hoping to. Well, he was hoping to leave the cue ball sitting pretty behind the seven. But unfortunately, he gave the table back with a clear shot and a one in the corner. Yeah, that will be marked down as a poor shot. <laughs> I like it when you say that over me, Carl, when you, when you say that it's a poor shot because some of these shots I, I couldn't do. <laughs> well, you've got to be honest. Oh. This one is an extremely poor <laughs> shot. <laughs> Maybe the worst one I've seen so far on the TV table. Just too much spin. Didn't want to be nowhere near the six ball. I'm not in disagreement, but I'm glad you said it, not I. Yeah, you would have thought with uh, Easy Sean, the one that he had there, that this could have been a runnable rack. Didn't need to get next to the six at all. And now he's just giving the table back to Lauro and a really, really runnable rack. It's going to be curious to see how he gets shape here on the four. I'm curious if he plays for the four five combination. If seems like that's what he was playing for in the previous rack. And probably want to get just behind the four. Unfortunately, he did not. And he's looking to see if it goes all the way down, but. I think the safe shot is to play safety here behind the five and little bottom left. He keeps looking at that ball all the way down though. Yeah, he does. I think it passes. It's not easy by any stretch. Oh, look at that for a shot. Nailed look it. at that for a shot. Beautiful. Right past the nine into the pocket with perfect shape on the five ball. These are the racks that are so nice to win all when your opponent's had a chance and he's messed it up and you get down and just pot all the balls. These are the ones that hurt. These are the ones that do the damage. Look how far he stands off his cue. Amazing. You can just tell we're only three racks in. He knows the game, doesn't he? He's got all them little shots in his armour. Spinning the cue ball around the table. Watch this one. Yeah, you see the way he hits it. He's going to need an angle here, though. Yeah, it's pretty straight here on the eight. Slight angle, but would have liked a little bit more, wouldn't he? Yeah, and you don't really want to be shooting this nine ball up into the top left and going past the middle you want to come down into the bottom left so if he's got angle he'll go forward yeah he's done well wants this to slow down a bit though and that is a little longer than he would have liked <laughs> just <Yeah>. there <laughs> exactly it's like he heard you and said this is where I wanted to be Carl this is where I wanted to be yeah we know Laura we know we know where you wait to be buddy little tester Easy, it's an easy game. Laurel Bongay with a nice finish there, showing years of experience that he's clearly got. Probably used to practice with Efren Reyes about 40 years ago or something. <laughs> Learned it all off Efren Bata Reyes. Did you ever get a chance to play Efren? I've actually played Efren four times in tournaments, and it's 4-0 to me. <laughs> okay. But... 
I've got to be honest, he was past his best. Okay. You know, it was his latter stages of his career, but you know, he's still he's still playing him, aren't you? It's still like a surreal feeling. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a pool hall in Las Vegas. Maybe you played out of it, Griffs. Yep, yep, yep. I've played. Uh, I got was fortunate enough to play Efren once. It was just a couple games, a little practice, not a not a tournament as, as okay. you you've done. So that was fun. Just like you said, a little surreal experience playing with the legend, the magician. Yeah, and you just learn. Even even though I had success in the matches, I just knew I was getting out thought on the safeties and the pushouts. Things just kind of went my way. Where it was an open table and stuff. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. whenever it was a push out, I was thinking. I don't really want to roll there against him because he's going to do this. And then <laughs> it just made me think things different. Enjoyed it, though. Yeah, we've all seen those YouTube videos of the amazing kick shots that he's done. And I think, it's like you said earlier, all these Filipino players have that in their arsenal, don't they? Need to cut this a little thinner than he did. He would have had a shot on the three, it looks like. Just left it there, hanging in the pocket for uh, Jewberry. And just comes off the rail a little bit. Leaves himself an angle, which is probably pretty good because he wants to come off the bottom rail and up table for the five ball. So nice shot off rail, good speed. This is Abdullah's chance to get back in this match. Kind of an in-between here. Would have either liked to have been a little bit more up table, have a shot in the five in the side pocket, or just take it in the corner. But he's kind of in-between. I think he'll still take it in the corner, come off one rail, and have a shot for the six. There it is. Good shot. Well, he's got an angle. I think he's going to have to go forward with the cue ball. Yeah, I think so too. Don't want to put bottom on this and get anywhere near that side. The safest bet is just a little bit of top right. Yeah, if he can draw the cue ball, if he's drawing, maybe he's thinking drawing it over near the nine ball. No, he went to the mm. top. He did. That's worked out okay. Yeah. Looks like he's draw this back instead of going one or even two rails to get shape for the nine just had a nice little draw pull back for the nine ball nicely executed didn't want that cue ball flying around table and there we go even though it feels like Juan Gay's in charge and he's been at the table more often than Abdullah we still have ourselves a close match here it's just a 2-3 game here so Anybody's match. Yeah, both players look pretty evenly poised. There's KK. KK is the owner of Aspire Recreation Center. He is playing, I believe he's up 1-0 at the moment. Might not be the latest 
score, but you can see him using a little bottom spin, getting back shape for the five. I mentioned this before, he was at one point rated number one in Singapore, number one pool player, so he's, uh, he's definitely a fan favorite here. He's got a couple different pool halls here in Singapore, and um, one of the nicest guys to ever meet. I went to ask you this yesterday. Do you think, come tomorrow, do you think there'll be people in watching? Has it been publicized well? Do you think there'll be some sort of fans coming in, or is it just... It is a closed event, so I don't believe we'll see ha have fans. There was some discussion about that early on, but I believe just with some of the COVID restrictions and things kind of opened up now, but I think they didn't want to open this up to too many fans. Okay. So, you know, I believe right now it's just going to be a closed event. We will have some special guests. I know that. I'm not sure if they'll be here tomorrow. Actually, I believe they will. Uh, don't know if I can announce what the special guest is, but... Don't spoil it. Then. Yeah. Don't spoil it. I'm going to get you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Couple VIPs from Singapore that will be here, so it'll be a treat. What do you think about this rack here? This is a chance to level it up here, 3-3. Three, three. You think he's got it? I think it, it, it's all depending on the three ball. I don't know if that passes the nine. Well, he's got to get past the two first. <laughs> yeah, he sure does. He's left himself okay, luckily. Uh, yeah, he's got away with that one. Could have gone anywhere. And I think the way the play, well, the way he played the cue ball, sorry, I think the three ball went. Oh, must have, yeah. Looks like he was playing for that corner pocket. Uh, looks like a two-rail kick here. Playing up into the area, he's going to need the seven ball to come and help him, and it has done. <laughs> Little bit of love there. Just what Laura was looking for. An opportunity to two. A chance to run this out. I'm curious if he's going to try and bump into the nine and three. Looks like it from here. No, he didn't. And the eight ball didn't help either. Sending the cue ball further down table, making this a little bit more of a difficult shot. Looks like he's just going to send the cue ball back up for distance. Oh, so he did go, okay. That is a very nice pot. It was. Now maybe he's going to try and pot the eight ball off the side of that orange five. Or oh, does the orange five, I don't believe the orange five goes, so I think he's playing a carom. Carom, yeah. You called it. There it is. This is where they're very good. I'm not saying it was the most difficult of caroms, but... I think the hardest part about that shot really was the, the speed control to make sure you have a shot on the five afterwards. He gave himself one. Not the easiest shot, but... He was going to play that with bottom left, but I think it would be better playing it with top right and send the cue ball round the table to play for the... Six in the bottom right. Yeah, that looked a better shot. So he changed his mind right at the end. And that was a better decision. <laughs> Absolutely. Doesn't have much of an angle, it looks like. So he's just playing for the drawback. Taking the seven all the way down table. Going to want to control the cue here. Yeah, it does it quite nicely. Didn't want to get too far into the middle of the table. Left him shot. Self a pretty easy shot on the nine.
Yeah, we've seen a couple of nice shots there from the Filipino, didn't we? It was a good pot on the three, and then the carom, and that was a nice rack. You know, they're not playing slow. They're at 4-2, but we've got some of the other tables, like Chang Lu Lung at 8-0. He's running through these racks. Eight zero in thirty nine minutes. That man there is Hayato Hajikata. He's got a little work to do. Not only in this rack, but also in the match. He's down six to one. break trying to extend his lead a little bit more well this is a nice break yeah this is going to work work out very good looks like there's an angle there as well so he can do something with a cue ball the orange five is on the left side of the table. The green six is right next to it. This is, it's all about this opening shot. Slow down cue, very nice. Now he can just pull the cue ball back. He would have liked the cue ball to have come off the rail, even if it would have landed straight. But the Filipinos play a little bit different to what was Europeans play. We, we would have maybe preferred to have been a little bit straight around the five. That was a good shot. Yeah, it was. I wonder if he was trying to kiss the nine to stop the cue a little bit. Either way, he's got a nice angle to come out for the seven. Yeah, to stun that ball in and come exactly straight across. No, it's not easy. Get away from that pocket. Ooh, that was close. Very close, just wanted to go high above the side. He wasn't trying to come low, he was trying to come above the side. and He's been very fortunate. Nice speed there, just want to be... Have to give yourself a little angle for the eight ball to roll it forward for the nine in the corner pocket. Stands a little bit weird as well. Everything looks a bit awkward, but he's getting the job done. Might not be the most textbook way of standing and queuing the ball, but it's all about knowing the game and playing these shots that he's been playing so far in the opening seven racks. Yeah, it is a little interesting, right? He brings that cue stick a little tucked up right next to his body. It's a little unorthodox, like you're saying, but he's shooting quite well. So whatever gets the job done. With that nine ball in the pocket, we've got a 5-2 match. Race to nine. Yeah, we're going to have a timeout, so that's... That's our time to also have a timeout. They see it's 5-2 to Laurel Bongo. Go and get yourself a drink. We'll be back in just a few minutes.
You think you know Singapore? It's time to reimagine. You think you know skyscrapers? Then what's this? And this. And this. And this. You think it is one island? Then what's this? And this. You think we're a city that never stops? Singapore, you think it's a country? A city? An island? Think again! It's so much more! You don't have to play like a pro to enjoy the game I love. If you've ever played in a friend's basement, you can compete in an APA league. In the APA, everyone can play and anyone can win. So if you're looking for a fun night out with your friends and family, join an APA pool league today. Have fun, meet people, play pool. Visit poolplayers.com today. Welcome back to day three. Jewberry to break as he trails five racks to two. And this will get the job done nicely. That is a lot better. Decided to go down the middle. And he's got a good shot of this one ball. Two ball goes down the corner. This rack is 
going to be about that red three. He's landed right on that jaw, the point of that middle pocket, and it can always be awkward when it lands there. He's landed a bit short as well. He wanted to be on the other side of the line. If you draw a straight line from that two into this bottom right corner, all the way through to the top rail, he wanted to be on the left side of the line. So he has got a lot of work to do here. Yeah, he was thinking so much about the three ball and how he didn't quite get the shape he wanted to ended up ended up missing the two ball in the corner when we had the time out then I just ran to the bathroom and Jewberry was in the bathroom and he was doing loads of stretches and all sorts were going on with his arms so <laughs> maybe he feels a little tight could be could be Ooh, I like the attempt but the seven ball was just a little bit big there Referee checking to see if the three ball is frozen. Lauro's giving in a second look as well. It's good enough, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think that little kiss off the six helped a little bit. Push the, push the cue ball further down the table. Yeah, we're likely to see the jump cue here. Yeah, not even looked at a kick shot. Just gone straight for that jump cue, and he's trying to pop this red three in the bottom right pocket. If he misses it and hits the short rail first, it's going to bounce back up towards them three balls, so something good might happen for him. If he hits the long rail first, I think he'll leave a pot. And if he hits it super thin like that, he'll definitely leave a pot. So <laughs> is it that all wrong? That's the thing with Lauro Bongo, though. He knows this game. He'll, he's played a lot of pool in the Philippines. You just know that, even though I don't personally know him. I just know he's played a lot of them challenge matches that you play over there in tough conditions. Ooh. Got a little friendly roll there. Need to put a little bit of bottom on that one to stop the cue ball so that it doesn't get over to the center of the table and get behind the seven. He's got a great shot on the four here. So he chose to come on the opposite side of the five, which is going to be a little interesting because I think he's going to have to really bring the cue ball here to get shape for the six. Looks like he's going to stun it on the left side of the nine. Yeah, off the two rails and back up. That's good. Yeah. You can see on the last few shots and the whole of this match, if you keep leaving the cue ball around the centre of the table a large portion of the time, you're always going to do well at the game of nine ball. Same again here. Look, get the cue ball around that centre. See? Centre of the table again. Decided to play that hard. I thought he was going to play it a little softer with right spin and just come down the right hand side of the table. Big shot coming up. 6 2 or 5 3. When it's all turn at break, is a big score line. Mm hmm.
Well, this has been very impressive indeed from the Filipino. Bongay 6, Zhuberi 2. What a performance this has been so far. Yeah, he seems quite control, quite confident, relaxed, composed. Talking of performances, Singapore's very own Lucius Yap is 6-2 up. Overdo take in. Wonderful view of the arena. Right, there's an exciting match. We got Wen Huang Fong, which we we uh, did a, a match of his earlier, and he's shooting a nine ball against Singapore's KK Chan, and looks like it's 6-3 now. For those of you watching, KK is also an, an instructor. He does he does lessons for the university here over at Aspar Recreational Center. So, you know, he's definitely one of the top pool players, but also likes to give back to Singapore and just gives back to the game. So, pretty inspiring. Hope he does well in this tournament. He's got a little bit of a mountain to climb over right now against the Vietnamese player, but I got faith he can pull through. Pretty solid break here. He's got a really nice shot on the one, a two ball sitting dead in the pocket. I'd like to see how he's going to get shape on the three. Other than that, these balls are pretty wide open. Yeah, he may go rail first, but if he does, the cue ball looks like it's going to go near the seven. Is he playing? Yeah, he's just going to stun this off the one back out. You have to hit it a lot harder. I'm not sure if it goes past the five for the bank. It's going to be very thin if it does. Yeah, from that angle, it, it, it does look like the bank would go. Seven balls in a good... Yeah, he's going for the bank. Ooh, very nice. He's not got the cue ball where he wanted, though. I don't think that five passes the eight. He was playing for the five in the other corner. And he's still going to have a go at this one. Doesn't need to, though. He's got a real nice safety here. If he wanted, he could get the cue ball up towards the eight. And just bank that five ball back down but he's feeling good isn't he he's coming with a good shots but this is the type of shot what can swing a match round but i don't blame him for taking on don't blame him at all but now i do maybe it was a step <laughs> too far <laughs> no it's more than missable um hindsight's a wonderful thing yeah, he was in rhythm. He was in stroke. You know, I don't blame him for taking the five. Like you said, he did have an, eight, uh, an easy easy defense, but he was in rhythm, and he's got a 6-2 lead. Um, he actually left himself, left Juberi a kind of a difficult shot here. I mean, it's going to be a thin cut. Got to stay away from the side pocket. Well, he missed it, but he had a horrendous contact. You could see the five ball skid on him. Yeah, that was about almost two diamonds off. That was that was yeah, rough. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he would have potted it anyway, but you could you could physically see the five ball just turn over. This is a thin one. Yeah, you gotta come back off the rail and come back forward. He did, probably a little harder than he wanted, but still good. Should be able to get shape for the seven. 
Yeah, this is going to be an interesting shot he's faced with here. Does he risk trying to find the centre spot of the table? Or does he go forward with left hand spin round the back of the eight ball to land low of the nine? Let's have a look what he's going to play. Get out of there. Oh. Well, it's a bit of a lifeline, this. Yeah, you can see there, Shrewsbury still talking about that kick he had on the five ball. <laughs> we seen it, buddy, don't worry. It was a bad contact. We haven't seen him at the table get any sort of rhythm in quite a while. So I think this is necessary for him to see the nine ball go down. Get some confidence back on the table. Oh my, oh my, oh my. It's gone from bad to worse this match and he's left the shot. Didn't see that one coming, didn't get on the nine as he wanted, but it all looked a little awkward for me, the way he had his bridge and tucked under the rail. I would never I was never convinced he was gonna pop that. Yeah, I hear you, Carl. It didn't seem he was very confident in the shot, he was just kind of going through the motions. You know, the shape from the seven to the eight really wasn't there, the shape from the eight to the nine really wasn't there. And uh, he was just kind of going through the motions on this one, like it's almost as if you've already made his mind up on how the how this match is going to end. I hope not, but that's what it looked like in that last track. It's all going well for the Philippines in this round. Desmothan's pull pull is seven two up against Tan Young Wei. You can see Nayuki Oi in the distance on the very far table. He currently, he's in the lead in that match. He's 6 4 up, so he's not out of the woodwork yet. Desperately trying to qualify. And then that table there that you're looking at is the battle of both Japanese players. And over on the very far right hand side of the screen, Toli Anhan from Singapore, he's practicing away. That's the practice tables over there. James around us, he's just walked in. He's going to get himself a little drink out of that fridge and then <laughs> start hitting some balls. <laughs> Yeah, that's the other Filipino we were talking about, Paul Paul, 7-2 up. Yeah, the Filipinos are really showing up this tournament. They're looking good. Yeah, one Filipino who's had it easy this week is the current US Open champion. Will he defend that title? It's at the Harris Resort, Atlantic City, October 10th through to the 15th. Tickets are still available from $15. There are a few tickets left. Maybe they're gone now because I've been saying this every day for the final day. So get over to the website, matchroompool.com and get yourself there. Atlantic City, what a tournament. One of the most prestigious events on the nine pool calendar really is what a week that is going to be yeah I think I might have to try and make my way over there I think you should that was an illegal break if you're wondering why he's not at the table still Dewberry 
you have to make three points. That's the rule we're playing here this week at the Asian Nine Ball Open. So you get a point for potting a ball on the break and you get a point if a ball c crosses the head string. And I get a little technical here. How about that eight ball there, Carl? It's right about on the head string. Does that count? If it breaks the line, it counts. As long as it breaks the line. Okay. Yeah, just a portion of the ball needs to break the line. But even if that did, I think it would have still been illegal because he's only potted one ball. Mm -hmm. Good mm. shot, but he's not on the two. Safety shot coming up. left the potting angle wasn't too sure there with the camera angle sometimes it's difficult to see needs another good one here if he was straight on the three he could have just left the cue ball around there so now he's got to come over off the left side rail back into that center of the table sometimes it's easy to miss these balls you fire it into the rail because you're hitting it hard they don't go in but he's done well there he's going to have a little bit of awkward queuing just where the 9 is yeah a little bit maybe this oh yeah he's jacked up a little bit over 9 yeah it's always interesting do you go in front of the ball do you go behind the ball and he actually has a little bit longer bridge so I'm a little surprised he's going in front of the 9 but I tend to go with the, the shorter bridge. So I, I would have played that in front of the nine as well. What about yourself, Carl? Longer, longer bridge, shorter bridge? Probably more longer. Yeah? Personally, yeah. He's got the cue ball perfect there for the five. Couldn't put it back. Where's the cue ball going? He's having a little look. Is it going near the side? It's gone very near the side. <laughs> you can tell off a pool player's mannerisms just the way he was stood there. We didn't see where the cue ball was going because he was stood in the way, but you just knew something was going on. Mm -hmm. Nice shot. Let the cue ball do the work. Glide alongside the other side of the table. Set up nicely for the eight ball. Was he over at this ball? He wasn't playing for the side. I don't know what it is. I, th I think he's played very well, but now we're getting near the end of the match. I just feel like, is, is he going to close it out convincing? I've seen that a couple of times around this TV table where they get to the seven, maybe into the eight mark, and then they get a little nervous or get a little shaky and don't really close the show out. But let's see if we can pot this ball on the side. and Just felt the whole rack shot after shot just not quite getting the cue ball where he wants and then from the 8 to the 9 there and you know you're 7-2 up your opponent's not showed you anything that you should be worried about I mean you just finish the match off don't you? Yeah you do and that, like you're mentioning the, the 8 to the 9 was real funny because he definitely didn't need to come behind the 9 I mean he had the whole front of the table to work with just just anyone on that side of the table. Oh, look at this. 
Dewberry has really struggled in this match. I mean, maybe we've got to give him some benefit of the doubt. The way he was stretching in the bathroom, maybe he's got some kind of little injury because, I mean, surely he's not played this bad the full event and got himself into LQ bracket. Yeah, no way. I mean, this is just a bit unusual, of course, right? I mean, you can't you can't be at this tournament with this high level of competition, still be in the tournament at this point, um, unless you're you're shooting well throughout the week. So he must have been doing well. Just as one, this must be one of those games, one of those matches he wish he can have back. And uh, yeah, maybe he's battling something else that we're unaware of. Either way, he gave that one back. And uh, Von Gay did finish a nine. He's now on the hill. One rack to go. There's a shot of KK shooting the seven ball. Coming back, shape for the nine. This will be nice to see. I'd like to see KK get back in this match. I know he's down a few racks. Yeah, he's down seven three. So that's made it seven four. Back to the TV table. One gate to break. He's on the hill. 8 2. All you've got to do now is break and run. And you're in the hat. It's a good start. Uh, it's a very good start indeed. He's got a shot on the two. Got a little bit of work to do to get back over for the three. But you're eight two up. This is not really work. This is a practice rack. It's different if it's eight all. It's amazing. Eight two shooting these balls. And then eight eight shooting these balls. The score line. What a different complexion it makes. What's your style, Carl? If you're up, if it's eight eight, do you get more aggressive or do you tend to be more defensive? I, I think it's just a case of what table layout sure. you face with. I mean, the shot he's played there. I mean, was that an aggressive shot or was it? No, I don't know. I think at eight eight with that table layout, you, you've got to attack the table. You have to play the shot he played and. You know, nine balls an attacking game, isn't it? You mm. you get rewarded for going for your shots, not playing like a lunatic, of course. <laughs> but you know, go go for your shots. Smart shot there. He knew he couldn't really get great on the orange five into the top left pocket so he just used that top rail drew the cue ball all the way back give himself the best option He's got all the shots, he really has. Even that shot, loading it up with right English mm -hmm. just to spin it round. And to get there, he's, he gets some action on the cue ball, he really does. Yeah, absolutely. He wanted to avoid the nine at all costs, so he decided not to even flirt with the nine. Take some heavy inside English and come around two rails for a nice shot on the seven. You know, despite what you said about, or what we said about last rack, about not really being there, a little shaky with his position play, this is quite the opposite. There's the concession. Overall, Laurel Bongo can be really proud of his performance. What a win. He beats Jewberry nine racks to two. Bongay is through to the last 32. This is just a confirmation.